Hello, everyone. My name is Rodney Lee, and I'm an employment analyst with the Paralyzed Veterans of America Veterans Career Program. I'm also an Army veteran, and today's objective is to provide an overview of resume tips and techniques to attract employers. So I'd like to start off by setting the stage and stating that resumes are subjective. There are no absolute right ways or wrong ways to do resumes. There are some best practices. Resumes are truly in the eyes of the beholder. However, there are some, some things to avoid and some things to include to make the most of your resume. One of those things that you want to avoid is military jargon. The whole point of your resume is for the employer to understand the value that you bring. Uh, but translating that military language into layman's term, terms is, is very important. Uh, if you think about it, approximately 19 million people have served in the military. In America, we have a population of 330 million people. So if you was to subtract that 19 million people from 330 million people, that's still roughly 311 million people in America that have no idea of the language that we speak. So again, translating that la language into layman's term makes a whole lot of sense so they can understand your value. Take this bullet, for example, recognized as the top AGS-1 officer in brigade, processed over 800 NCOERs and OERs that resulted in zero errors while assigned to FOB TARA. Now, if you've never served in the military, you may have no idea of what that bullet means. So let's translate it. Uh, recognized as the top HR manager for a large organization, processed over 800 military evaluations that resulted in zero errors while assigned overseas. And as you will see, that bullet makes a little bit more sense to someone that's never served. These are some recommendations. Um, when you upload a resume into the databases, uh, the business databases or company databases that you're applying to, you want to ensure that uh, that resume is not cut off if it's uh, scanned in crooked. So you want to ensure your borders are between one half and one inch. The font uh, is, uh, these are some recommendations. There are other good font styles out there that work, but these are some, some good font styles. The font size, as far as the body, should be anywhere between 10 and 12 point font. Uh, and the header sections, 12 to 16. Uh, you shouldn't have more than two pages uh, in your private sector resumes. Um, now, don't get me wrong. I mean, if you choose to have more, I mean, that's fine. Uh, but recruiters have a limited amount of time to really review your resume. So it's always recommended that you stay within two pages. Uh, no pictures on resumes. Uh, ensure your, you check your spelling. Attention to detail is, is very important with a lot of jobs out there. So uh, you want to ensure that and also uh, format symmetry. So, again, just some, some recommendations uh, when it comes to uh, your resume. All right, so what we'll talk about today is the chronological style resume. There, there are many styles out there. Uh, there's functional combination um, and, and different design type of uh, resume styles. Uh, but the chronological resume style is the most popular, uh, the one that uh, resonates the most with a lot of hiring officials out there. So we'll talk about that today. Uh, and this particular uh, slide will serve as the agenda. We'll talk about the name and contact information the summary, the skills, the professional experience, which is done in reverse chronological order, uh, and the education. So starting with the, the name and the contact information, uh, in your header section of uh, your resume, obviously you want to have your name, uh, but city and state of where you live is only thing that's required in the resume. Uh, I've seen so many resumes with the actual physical address listed on the resume, and you want to avoid that uh, as much as possible. Uh, we certainly don't want anyone showing up at your house uh, with uh, finding your address with uh, some of these resumes that's loaded on some of the job boards out there. Um, when you uh, get ready to apply for the role, they'll ask for your actual physical address within the secure tunnel of the application. But uh, as far as your resume, just ensure that you include city and state. Phone number, email address uh, at a minimum. Um, and what's optional uh, is a LinkedIn address or any other online por portfolio links that you may have. The summary section, uh, in my opinion, this is a very important section. Uh, uh, this is a, a section of the resume where you have the opportunity early in the resume to really 
showcase uh, your value and, and, and how you're a good fit to that particular role. Uh, you can take this opportunity to um, uh, use the qualification section of uh, the job announcement uh, by using that information and, and putting it inside your, your professional summary. Uh, the next slide, I'll show you an example of uh, exactly what I'm talking about. So you can see by this uh, slide here, um, the, the, the top portion uh, is just an example of a job qualification posting, and it has um, the, the things that uh, they're asking for you to be qualified. It's so five years of HR experience, general knowledge of HR, interpersonal skills, two years of Kronos experience, confidentiality is required, and public speaking skills are required. They're also putting a little note in there that veterans are encouraged to apply. So we, we want to definitely make sure that we self-identify. So this is uh, this example here is, is what we're talking about when we say tailor your resume you know, to the job. So these are the things that they're asking for for you to be qualified in. So you can see by the example uh, professional summary that um, it states a uh, human resource professional with over six years of experience. Well, the requirement at, top, at the top states five years of experience, so we've met that qualification. It goes on to say experience in, a, um, in skills in a wide range of HR functions. Well, the second bullet says general knowledge of HR. It goes on to talk about uh, Kronos experience with over three years as a subject matter expert. Uh, and again, the requirement was only two years of experience. It talks about excellent interpersonal and public speaking skills. You self-identified as an Army veteran and you have a top secret clearance, which uh, meets that confidentiality required. So you can see through this example that by taking the, the qualification posting and then applying that information inside your professional summary, you can showcase early in the resume how you meet the qualifications. This may lead the recruiter to uh, take a little extra time uh, reviewing your professional uh, experience just from reading your professional summary. The skills section of the resume, uh, you want to include the skills that they highlight in the job description, um, which most of the time are hard skills. Um, so you obviously want to list those first. But any soft skills like uh, interpersonal communications, if they ask for those particular things, so let's talk about the professional experience section. Uh, what you want to ensure that you have on there is uh, the position title of uh, your previous job or current job, the company name, the city and state where the job is located, the employment from and to dates, um, uh, including the, the, the month and year. Uh, very important because if uh, they're asking for you to have X amount of years of experience, uh, they, they really can't determine that if, if, if you just have the year listed on your resume. So ensure that you put the month and the year. It's also <coughs> recommended that um, you use bullets instead of paragraph form. Again, bullets are easier to read. Um, it's easier to kind of get the gist of um, how you're qualified uh, to that particular role. Um, again, with, with limited time that the recruiter has to review your resume, uh, sitting there reading a paragraph full of information will probably not happen. Uh, they'll, they'll try to just skim to see uh, if you are qualified for the role. But if you use bullets, they may read the whole thing. We'll speak more on um, sticking to what's pertinent in, in a, a following slide. Uh, we'll talk a little bit more about that. But um, as far as your work history, you don't want to go back uh, any more than 10 to 12 years. Um, you want to show your your experience, uh, your relevant experience. So going back any further than 12 years, um, you know, processes and, and things of that nature has changed over the years. So that's more of your relevant work history. Uh, you want to lead with action verbs uh, like led, created, produced, design to uh, start off uh basically with those action words to talk about something that you did. Um, it, it's the difference of uh, describing accomplishments versus responsibilities. Um, and that's important. Uh, everyone that's had a job has had responsibilities. 
uh, what's important to uh, convey in your resume is how you apply those responsibilities. And uh, the next bullet, um, you know, talking about uh, quantify as often as possible. Well, well, some techniques that you can use um, is uh, accomplish X as measured by Y by doing Z or simply just saying, what did you do? How did you do it? And what was the results? Uh, using that outline, if you will, to kind of help you create bullets will will help you to kind of, you know, talk more towards accomplishments again versus responsibilities. So this is an example of what I'm talking about. Accomplish X is measured by Y by doing Z. So what did I accomplish? Well, I provided excellent customer service. Well, if I'm uh, reading a bullet and it just says uh, I provided excellent customer service, I might ask the question says who? But if you go on to give me, give me a little bit more information, you know, as measured by, well, as evident by 215 customer critiques with a 98% favorable rating uh, by listening, providing sound advice and presenting a friendly and professional demeanor. Well, that gives me a little information uh, and and makes me, you know, say, OK, well, maybe they do have some pretty um, excellent customer service skills. The next bullet, what did you do? How did you do it? And what was the results? Again, if I was to, 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 to provide a bullet that stated, you know, I led a team of 10 people, um, just stopping there, um, you know, leading a 10 to 10 people was uh, your responsibility. But how did you lead those, uh, those that, that team of 10 people is what I'm interested to know. So uh, by saying, uh, let us apply a team of 10 people by teaching expectations, positive engagements, and one-on-one -on -one growth counseling, which improved morale, increased inventory accuracy rates by 19% from 79% to 98% within the first 90 days, that kind of gives me a sense that you're a pretty good leader. And uh, you, you may be the, the person that I need on my team. Again, we want to show that impact. We want to show what you accomplish and how you can be valuable to our organization. What we do not want to do is squeeze everything that we've done in the last 10 years uh, in, into a two page document that that's not helpful and it can tend to uh, confuse the recruiter. So we want to talk about the things that are relevant to the particular role. And um, as veterans, we, we wear many different hats in the a, in a individual role. So be, because we were um, operations managers or logistic managers or trainers, administrators, uh, if we're applying to an IT role, we don't need to talk about all the things that we did. We just need to talk about the things that's pertinent to the role that we applied to. So we want to focus on that. Again, that's what we call tailoring the resume to the opportunity. So a tip I like to share is um, how do we do this exactly? Because there are there is no such thing as one resume fits all. Uh, even if I apply to um, two jobs uh, with the same job title, logistics manager, for example. Well, a logistics manager for company A may have different requirements uh, for a logistics manager in company B. So I may have to submit two different resumes. But you might think, well, that's a lot of work. You know, every time I apply for a job, uh, creating a, a different resume may, may be overwhelming. Absolutely. Well, what, what you want to do is just build master resumes. Now, that, that will take some time and some hard work uh, in the beginning. It, it can be just one big giant master resume or you can break it down to three different uh, or four different or five different resumes uh, within a particular skill set. Uh, the example that you see here, um, if uh, you were a logist had a logistics background, an IT background and an HR background, well, you can have uh, three separate res master resumes um, talking about nothing but IT, nothing uh, except for logistics and nothing but HR in that particular resume. Or you can take um, all the experience that you had uh, over the last 10 years and just put every single thing that you've done in that particular role within that master resume document. So when it's time to start applying to a particular role, at that point, all I have to do is cut and paste the pertinent information from my master resume into the resume that I'm using to apply to the job. And last, uh, obviously, is your education uh, section. And uh, you want to list uh, all your highest degrees first, 
followed by all relevant education uh, certifications that you may have. Uh, you want to list the degree type, the degree field, the name of the institution, uh, the city and state, and any honors that you receive. What's optional is graduation gear and GPA. Uh, if you graduated from college many, many, many years ago, it's not necessarily it's not necessary to, to, to place the data in there if you choose not to. And the last slide is uh, an example of exactly what I was talking about. Um, this um, example, as you can see on the top, uh, they, they have the heading uh, with the individual's name, the, the, the city and state of where they live, their email address, their phone number, and a LinkedIn um, address. They have their professional summary, and that professional summary is written uh, specific to that particular role. They have uh, their skills listed under that uh, particular summary, and then their uh, work history, their professional experience, uh, followed by their education. Now, it doesn't necessarily have to be in this order. If you decide to bring the education and, and, and put it up under skills, that's fine. Again, resumes are subjective, but uh, having a minimum of this uh, type of information inside your resume will be in your best interest and, and make you that much more attractive to attractive to employers. So thank you for your time. Uh, I hope that that information that I just provided was helpful. Um, again, my name is Rodney Lee, and I'm with uh, the Paralyzed Veterans of America Veterans Career Program. Thank you for your time. Since 1946, PVA has been the leading advocate for veterans with spinal cord injuries and diseases such as MS and ALS. We help all veterans with disabilities by helping with earned benefits and specialized health care, education and career resources, adaptive sports, housing and legal assistance. Learn more at pva.org.